The Cumberland River offers one of the few places in the southeastern United States with enough cool water throughout the year for trout. The river's chill is due to the mile-long Wolf Creek Dam, which impounds Lake Cumberland. Lake Cumberland is 101 miles long and reaches 184 feet deep. Only eight lakes in the country hold more water. However, in certain times of the year, fish in this huge lake and its tailwater depend on a delicate balance of dissolved oxygen, warm water, and cool water to survive. In winter, cold air and runoff from snow cool the lake's temperature. Lake Cumberland's water temperatures remain about the same from top to bottom at this time of year. The water holds plenty of dissolved oxygen for fish. Spring rainstorms signal the beginning of the lake's seasonal thermal layering. However, too much rain can lead to problems later in the year. This warm rain collected in the watershed begins pouring into the lake. The surface water grows warmer as the denser cold water remains in the lower depths and the thermocline begins to form between the two layers. Rising water levels prompt the Army Corps of Engineers to release water in order to relieve increasing pressure on the dam. This water is pulled from the cooler mid-depths of the lake. The result is a steady decline in the amount of cold water stored in Lake Cumberland. While repairing Wolf Creek Dam, the Corps is keeping the lake elevation at 680 feet above sea level, 40 feet lower than normal. So whenever the water rises above this level, more is pulled through the dam's generators and deposited into the tailwaters below the dam. If there is not too much rain, enough cold oxygenated water is stored to last the entire year. On the other hand, a large amount of rain necessitates the use of all six turbines for longer periods of time, which pull vast quantities of cold water. This kind of discharge for prolonged periods means bad news for stripers and walleye, which prefer the cooler depths of the lake. Early in the year, the stripers and walleye can find adequate dissolved oxygen at many depths of the lake. However, as summer wears on and the upper layer of the lake heats up, these fish make seeking a preferred temperature a priority and will swim toward the depths in search of cooler water. While the fish are in the cooler area, the band of water above them quickly loses oxygen due to normal processes. This effectively traps the fish in an area of limited oxygen, which will dissipate over time. Prior to the repairs of the dam, the extra 40 feet of water acted as a buffer, allowing more oxygenated water to sustain the fish throughout the summer. At this point, the heated upper level of the lake has adequate oxygen, but the fish would have to swim through an area with very little oxygen just to reach it. And once there, they would become stressed by the high temperatures. So they stick to where the temperature is comfortable, despite being stressed from declining levels of oxygen. A fish that is stressed for extended periods of time may die. The combination of the lower water levels due to repairs and the warmer than normal bottom depths also negatively impact the trout in the river below the dam. When the inevitable summer drought sets in, there is not as much water to release from the lake, since the Army Corps of Engineers is now operating the lake level in a very narrow range. Miles downstream of the dam, the Lord Discharge conspires with the summer heat to warm the river well beyond the preferred temperature of trout. The fish seek refuge by swimming upstream toward the dam where temperatures are slightly more tolerable.
Many trout are forced into a smaller area of the river, and the food supply can become limiting. This problem can lead to malnourished fish and, in extreme situations, fish kills. A temporary remedy for this issue is the opening of sluice gates at the bottom of the dam. Sluice intakes pull colder water from deeper in the lake. The rushing white water that exits the gates also supplies the river with a boost of oxygen. However, the low volume of this relatively cooler water can quickly be depleted as well. Once we get back into late fall and early winter, Lake Cumberland begins to cool again. The thermocline breaks down as the water temps become more uniform throughout the water column. And the absence of this invisible barrier allows oxygen to circulate through all elevations. The lake has officially turned over and the process will begin anew.